Hello there, this is Terry Guys, and I think this is going to be a pretty little Rainbow Live episode 32 and 30, actually 33 and 34 review. Unfortunately, I'm sorry that this was super, super late for 33 and super, super early for 34, but um, I really haven't had the time to record with the Friday, I believe that I uploaded for, I believe the 32 review? Yeah, I believe the 32 review, um, which was the Friday before, and or the Thursday before. And I haven't uploaded anything since, which I'm really, really sorry about. But I just, unfortunately, haven't had the time to record, and I'm not going to shoot a code it. I was procrastinating. I don't know why, but I was procrastinating hard. But they, here I am again, another double episode of you. Um... Maybe this format works for you guys. Leave a comment down below if it does. If it doesn't, then I will definitely, definitely try to get them together as separate episode reviews. But again, let us get in with the double episode review. Starting off with episode 33, which was all about a triangle date. And this triangle date was featuring Wakana and Kazuki and An. And basically, the whole episode was about oh, Kazuki has an extra ha, Kazuki has extra tickets because one of his, I believe, I don't know if it was his father or his um, what is it? I guess one of his coworkers gave him two tickets to two movie tickets, and one of them happened to be, and it used happened to be for the Momo Kappa movie. Now what happens is um, then. What happens is Kazuki then asks An if she can come. She's like, yeah, I'll come. And for, I believe, um, and Wakana, he asks Wakana, and she's like, oh, yeah, okay, why not? And basically, Wakana and Kazuki arrive at the movie theater, and An gets there as well. But um, a little bit before, she was struggling about, oh, yeah, who's going to take over the shop? And... Right then and there, um, Rene and Ku come in to help her out and sort of take over the shop as she's having this quote-unquote triangle date. Now, as what goes on is um, they go to the Momo Kappa movie and An and Kazuki are sitting next to each other and Wakana is sort of off to the side. Wakana gets scared and, what is it, looks over to see if like An and Kazuki are like huddling together. It's like they're scared, but... Yeah, they just watch the movie very calmly. Kazuki takes a little glance and then walks away. Then what happens is Anna leaves the scene because, well, Rene and Ku are doing like party tricks over there, and well, An's father wants her wants An back, so she rushes back. And then Kazuki walks with An and I mean walking her and basically walking her walking away, going to another place. Then what happens is walking his father sees walking her. And then he says, oh, yeah, come with me. And basically, then Wakana walks away. She's like, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, sorry about this. And she walks away with, from Kazuki. Now what happens is throughout the episode, we then learn that Wakana is going, is in danger of going back home because her father got a new assignment. And basically, it forces them to move to another location and, of course, as we've seen in the flashbacks in the previous episodes, uh, Wakana doesn't really like... Wakana was sort of along with it. But when it came to Belle, when she was younger, that she didn't want to go. And they stood with it. But this time her father was saying, like, her father was sort of sticking to it. Then what happens is she goes to Kazuki for advice, asks him about it. And Kazuki says, well... Why don't you just off the tickets to him, to uh, to the Prism show? Because again, earlier on in the episode, Wakana and Wakana Bell and Ojaha was sitting at a table in Outer Rose, and Ojaha says, "Oh yeah, I have some free tickets. Uh, you want them?" Because Ojaha says that her family's doing something, and that Bell doesn't really have family to come to her Prism show. Just her mother, but her mother would go anyway. So. Or her mother doesn't really go unless it's for, like, herself. But that's why Wakanda then takes the tickets and she's like, oh, yay. 
And what happens is then Wakanda then offers the tickets to her parents. And her father's a bit hesitant, but then says, nah, all right, I'll give it a try. Now, the day of the show comes, Wakanda, uh, what is it? Bells Rose performs a, re- performs a Rosette Nebula, the usual show. And Wakanda is then all happy and freedom, having freedom. And basically, she then scours the crowd after the show and looks for her father. She only sees her mother. And then Wakanda asks, yeah, what's wrong? And Wakanda's mother says, oh, well, your father said he had something very urgent to do. So unfortunately, he couldn't make it. Now, this shocks Wakanda, but it doesn't really, she doesn't really show it. She's like, oh, well, all right. I guess so. That's fine. And uh, see you when you get home. See you when, see you when I get home. But what happens is then Wakanda goes up to Kazuki under the underpass, starts crying, and Kazuki grabs her and holds her close to his chest. Unfortunately, at that same time, On is coming, On is walking by with, what is it, Sembe to be given to, like, Naru and the rest of the Prism Stone, but happens to, go, happens to try and go to Kazuki first, but then drops the bag as a shock to see that, well, that happened, that Wakana x Kazuki is a thing. And that's basically the end of the episode. Now let's move on to episode 34, which was all about Naru and Rene. And basically, their duo, themselves as a duo, I guess, because they were really pushing the duo portion in this episode. Because... No matter where we saw Naru, we always saw Rene. Like, no matter what scene it was, Rene was always next to Naru. Be it at their home, be it at Prism Stone, be it at the Prism show itself. Naru and Rene had a connection. And they really forced that in this episode. Which I like, because they don't they didn't really do that at all. Like, it was mostly, hey, we're going to focus on one character, and that's it. Not two characters at the same time. Um, but yeah, the other basis of the episode is Naru is invited to do a charity show. Um, she was actually recommended by Junae to do a charity show alone. Not as Happy Rain. Alone. And Naru is sort of freaking out. But then she gets over it and she's like, oh, this... Wow. Awesome. Let's do this. And then... Naru and Rene try and decide, oh yeah, what's the stage going to look like? What are we going to do for it? Everyone's all happy and such. And once they finally come up with the, uh, with I guess the quote-unquote schematic for it, they get ready to start the Prism show. Now, the crowd is full of kids. Full of kids. And when the lights go down, they start going, well, not crazy. They start crying, like... They call for their mommy and daddy because, of course, kids are scared of the dark. Heck, I was scared of the dark at one point. Actually, still am. But, um, yeah, they were scared of the dark and they're crying and everything. And it seemed like the show was going to fall apart. But then Naru has a telepathic communication with Rene. Very awesome, I remember that. But they have a telepathic, like, communication. And then Naru says, oh... Like, don't cry. Hold hands. It'll be good. It'll be, uh, what is it? Like, you guys are together. Everyone just hold hands. Be together. And, what is it? Just get happy, you know? Not, nothing to be scared of. And then all the kids start laughing. Ito and on Ito and on start holding hands. And Belle takes walking and Oto has hands. Now what happens is then the Prism show starts. Um, what is it? I believe it's Dream Bird. I can't remember the name off the top of my head for some reason since it's so long. But what happens is then Naru's uh, Naru's My Song begins to play. And during it, for some odd reason, Ido, An, Bell, Wakana, and Otaha's seventh chords activate. For no reason. Just activate. And what happens is then Naru continues to perform her show. She has this sort of sparkle aura coming off of her that you can see very faintly. That you can see faintly. And what happens is then, as she's performing her Prism Live, Rene comes out to perform her Prism Live. 
And I believe the counts are up to Naru Outfit V2, Guitar V3, um, Rene V2 for both. Now, what happens then is they perform four prism jumps. They perform, I believe it's Lovely and Star Splash. Um, trying to remember the second jump. I can't really. Um, I believe the second jump. I can't really remember. I don't know why. Um, the third jump I do remember, which is start double uh, start a shower duo, and the fourth one is lovely rainbow. Is uh, was it lovely rainbow fantasy? Now, that's basically the episode because after that, all the kids are happy and it's all cool. And for some reason during the show, June was scared, like her face just drained. Her face, she she had sweat dripping down her eyes were all the way open and for some reason at one point all seven of the prism stars naru on ido bell wakana otaha and rene were surrounding were surrounding june while holding hands and having rainbows around her now have rainbows around him so for some reason i don't know what's wrong with june you know I really want to know. We know somewhat about Himuro. Now we need Junae's side. Hopefully it's revealed in the next three weeks. Considering we're getting to that amazing episode 37 arc. That I, that, uh, 37 part that I love. Aurora Dream. Damn, my future did it well. I hope Rainbow Live lives up to the reputation. But again, that is the end of the double episode review. I thank you guys very much for watching. Again, I am sorry for the delay on 33. And I guess sort of happy, I don't know, about getting 34 out there super early. But again, thank you very much for watching. And if you've supported me, thank you very much as well. But again, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you guys later.